Hi there, and welcome to this short video in which I'm going to hopefully explain how I navigate the aeroplane uh, around the country. Now, there's two ways to do this, and we're going to illustrate this uh, today in a trip I've, I've taken quite a few times from Auckland, or North Shore Airfield, which is just north of Auckland, down to New Plymouth. Now, the first way to do this is the old-fashioned way, or, and, and the way that most uh, owners of light aircraft would do if the weather is really good, and that's just navigating visually. It is exactly as you would expect it. Take off, um, in this case, follow the coast, and we get to New Plymouth. Let's have a look at how that might happen in practice. So I'll go to my flight plan feature, NZNE is my um, airfield departure, North Shore, and I'm going to go to NZ. NP, which is my destination, and there we go. Right there on the map is my point-to-point -point route. Now there's a couple of problems with that. First problem is it takes me way over the sea, and I would be flying quite low probably for this trip, and I've only got one engine. And, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, conservative, so the best thing to do is to follow the coast a bit more closely. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my route and take it into... Raglan, and Raglan's a really good place to stop for coffee. There's a good little airfield right next to the camping ground. It's uh, it's a very good place to put on my route. The second issue, if I look here, my purple line is my route, and my route takes me very close. If you zoom in there, just to the right of that route, you can see the main runway at Auckland Airport. Now, flying my airplane right in front of the uh, Airbuses and Boeing's landing there is probably not a good idea. So I'm going to grab that route again. And drag it out, put it down there next to Monaco Heads. So there I've got a really uh, simple and a fairly sensible way to fly from just north of Auckland. The green circle shows where I'm leaving from. Down the coast, Monaco Heads, down past Raglan, follow on further down the coast to my Lamington at New Plymouth. Now that's great if the weather's good. What if the weather's not so good? What if it's cloudy? Well, luckily, the aeroplane is equipped to fly in clouds, so there's really nothing stopping me from taking off, climbing up into the cloud, and flying around in the cloud to my heart's content. I've got uh, everything I need to know which way is up and which way I'm pointing. The problem is, if everyone did that, uh, you know, no one would know where anyone else was, and it would be a bit of a nightmare. So to get around that, we follow very strict flight paths when we're flying in cloud and it's called uh, the system is called instrument flight rules and the entire country is crisscrossed with an invisible network of point to point flight paths problem is a map like this we can't really see them so to get a, a view of those we need to switch to another map let's do that and there it is you will see that we're in the previous map, in fact you can see around the corners uh, because we've just chosen a map that covers our route. Uh, in the previous map we could see details like lakes and rivers and coastlines and forests and mountains. In the instrument flying map, all we can see is the coastline. We can't see where the cities are, we can't see where the mountains are, we can't see where the rivers are. We rely instead on our instruments to tell us where we are. And while some information has been taken away from the map, a lot more information has been put into the map. So let's look a bit closely at Auckland Airport. And that's right in the middle of the map at the moment. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, a little bit further, and there we are. Now, Auckland Airport is more or less where that square is with the hexagon in the middle of it. And what that square and hexagon indicates is there's a radio beacon. So now, instead of navigating by looking out the window, we can, navigating, we can navigate by flying from one radio beacon to the next. So that's the first thing that appears on this map. The second thing that appears on this map is the routes which connect one radio beacon to another. So I'll zoom in again. And you can see that Auckland is pretty much ringed with these, not surprisingly because it's a major airport. Let's look a bit more closely at those. On each of those routes is a three-digit number, 015, 042, 089, 113, and so on. Those are compass headings, so they tell us which way to fly to stay on the route. So 360 is north, 180 is south, 090 is east, and so on. So that's the first piece of information. The second piece of information 
If you look down towards the bottom of the screen, there's a big uh, sort of stretched hexagon with Q277 on it. Just to the right of that is a four-digit number, 1500, and each of the roots has a number like that. I've just revealed a 3000, to the right of that is a 2400. That is the minimum safe altitude in feet that we are allowed to fly that route. And because that route's been very carefully surveyed and measured, if we fly at 3,000 feet or 2,400 feet or whatever the route says, we can be confident that we are safely clear by at least 1,000 feet of any hills or terrain below us. So that's a direction and an altitude. The other things we can see on the screen, we talked about that, um, that long hexagon with Q277. That's the identifier of the particular route. So rather than say I'm going from A to B to C to D to E, you can say I'm going on Q277, and that might go all the way to Wellington, for all I know. Now the final thing we're going to look at on the route, just below that Q277, see there's a little black triangle pointing upwards, and there's a line coming out from it that says Brook. What that is, is a GPS waypoint, or GPS um, position. This is an arbitrary point in space that we use to navigate the aeroplane to and from and fly around the country, sometimes without reference to these radio beacons. And what it really is, is just a, a latitude and a longitude expressed as a, as a word, in this case, Brook. And if you look below Brook, you can see it says south 37 degrees, 8 minutes and 17 seconds, east 174 degrees, 48 minutes and 50 seconds, which is a mouthful. So instead, we just say Brook, and when I publish Brook, in, or when I punch Brook into my, uh, my GPS in the aeroplane, it knows exactly where that is. So let's zoom out a little bit and see how we're going to make our trip from North Shore with the green circle down to New Plymouth. And we're clearly not going to do it by that purple route because that's, that doesn't relate to any of these instrument routes. And if we did that, no one would know what we were doing. So let's put in another flight plan. So in this case, we still want to go from North Shore to New Plymouth, but this time I've toggled suggest IFR routes, and that's Instrument Flight Rule Routes. And if I hit return, it will come up with a, uh, a recommended route, which I will accept. And now you will see on the map, there's a very different way of getting from Auckland to New Plymouth. It actually takes us a bit further off the coast, but one of the beauties of this sort of flying is typically it will go higher. So we'll go between eight and 10,000 feet on a trip like that. So you know, when you're, when you're nice and high, it doesn't matter if you're a little bit further from the coast in a single-engined airplane. So let's go a bit closer and see what that route is telling us. So the green circle, again, is where we're starting at uh, North Shore Airfield. The blue circle is our first waypoint, and that's the one we looked at before. That's Auckland Airport, or the beacon just next to Auckland Airport, in truth. From there, we, uh, we go south on a heading of 183 degrees. We don't quite go over Brook. Brook's just, uh, will be out to our left as we head south. But we go on a route called Y320. You can see the minimum altitude for that is 1,900 feet. And we carry on down to a made-up point called Kapai, which is, uh, if you're not a New Zealander, it's a word that means uh, all good or okay. Uh, we make a bit of a jink, go on down to another made-up point called Ekali, which again is uh, much easier to say than South 38, 20, 54, East 174, 1912, and we're getting pretty close to New Plymouth now. I'll zoom out a little bit. Where are you, New Plymouth? There's New Plymouth at the bottom of the screen in the, uh, in the purple circle. So the last point we get to, the last made-up point, called Dobbo, comes with something special. And that's a holding pattern. You can see there's a little racetrack, a little lozenge shape. And if, you know, three or four airplanes are arriving at New Plymouth at the same time and the controller wants to, you know, um, do a bit of traffic management, uh, she might say, OK, Tango, Golf, Foxtrot, hold at Dobbo, 4,000 feet. So when I get to Dobbo, instead of carrying on south to New Plymouth, I'll do a right turn and enter that holding pattern and just keep doing that all day long until she tears it's, uh, it's time to land. And when she does... Heading on down, we get to one of those, there's a lot of information all on top of each other on this map, but when I zoom out, you can see there's one of those squares with the hexagon inside, which is a radio beacon, right on top of New Plymouth Airfield, where I promise you, New Zealand's very best lamingtons are to be found. So that's the two ways of navigating the aeroplane around the country. Visual flight rules with the... Uh, 
map that shows us all the, uh, the, the topography and the terrain and instrument flight rules where we use the airways routes. Thanks for watching. In the next video we'll uh, take a closer look at what might happen if we get to New Plymouth and uh-oh, it's cloudy there as well. Thanks for watching.